That was Spanish for three, two, one. Yeah, you just said uno. No, I said tres, dos, uno while you were talking. I didn't, you I didn't win. I didn't if hear you say those. uno. Does that mean you win? <clears throat> That's right. I win. Guys, you can right. attest. I said three, two. Okay. Foreign agents on American soil and Blade Show. You got to put West in there. Because if you don't put West in there, some. They'll do, think it was Blade Show East. Yeah. Like, I don't know Blade Show East. It's just Blade Show. Whatever. Yeah. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do a Blade Show North next year, and we're we're gonna have it in uh, in Sweetgrass, Montana. That's right. As far north as you can go without getting into communist Canada. <laughs> no, uh, that's, not, that's not true. How far north can you go without you can go to Alaska? No, oh. which is further north. Uh, let, let's just keep it Conus, okay? Let's just keep it Conus. Can I'm we keep here it Conus to challenge you? That is my purpose in this show. Lower forty-eight. All right. So, like I said, I said we were going to talk about this, and we're going to. Uh, we're going to talk about Duracoat and Brownells and and crossbreed holsters being dangerous on demand and all that good stuff. But first things first. I'm going to remind you, if you're in the Discord, you can ask questions. If you don't want to ask questions, then fine. I don't care. Uh, and as soon as Zach plays the intro music, we're going to talk about our Blade Show follow-up. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear. We also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. That is true. That is me. I am he. And uh, we're going to go ahead and kick this off. Now, but actually, before we get into the Blade Show West follow-up, uh, Jared and Zach, or Zach and Jared, have something to talk about. Uh, the... National Hug Your AK Day is coming up on October 18th. This is the 10th annual. Uh, well, we've been doing it for 10 full years now, so it kind of puts us into our 11th year, but whatever. Um, yes, the very first one was announced and made official on October 18th, 2012. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. There we go. Mm -hmm. That's how many. Yeah, so this is this is the eleventh one. Wow, because last year we celebrated that it was the tenth one. Uh, so I don't I don't care however you math it, but the fact is we've been doing this for over ten years now. Uh, so that there you go, National Hug Your AK Day, and how are we going to celebrate? Well, number one, take a picture of yourself hugging your AK, hashtag it, hug your AK, and put it on your favorite socialist media account. And then Jared and Zach are going to tell you how you can participate uh, and maybe win something really cool like an AK. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Occam Defense Solutions uh, has put up a raffle item for the raffles that we're running to support the Jaeger family. Uh, if you need more information on that, there's plenty on the raffle page. Uh, you can go get all the information you need at jaredmarkle.com. It's J-A-R-R-A-D-M-A-R-K-E-L.com. All the information's on there about there's multiple raffles. So you can see all the information on both raffles. But if you're specifically interested in this AK from ODS, the ODS 1775 from Occam Defense Solutions, then uh, which is an it, it's the best AK you can buy. So, yeah, there's that. It is a 100 percent made in America, high end Cadillac uh, of AKs. That's right. It is the Cadillac of AKs. Yep. And it's for as little as fifty dollar investment. You can get a raffle ticket. You get one raffle ticket for fifty bucks. You get three if you donate a hundred, and you get seven raffle tickets, so seven chances to win. If you donate two hundred dollars or more, now you can donate as many times as you'd like. That doesn't make any sense. It does it makes perfect sense. The raffle will run until November thirtieth, twenty twenty two. Oh, okay. Or right. <laughs> until ten thousand dollars is raised, whichever comes first. Mm. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay, I figured it. I was doing twenty five in my brain. There you go. There you go. There you go. All right. All right. And uh, this will lead us into our next topic. 
So one of the other items in the uh, in the raffle is a Winkler Air Force survival knife. Wait, real quick. From Winkler Dives. This is a okay. different raffle. Separate yeah. raffle. Yeah, it's a separate one. Yes, indeed it is. And I also had one more thing I wanted to throw in here because I was working on it as we were talking because the idea just hit my brain. Uh-oh. And that, that, that is me. that we are going to be having for sale on, on shopsotg.com official have you hugged your AK today stickers. Oh, nice. Oh, a little what are they going to be looking like? Do you have they're, an image? They're going to be looking like this. And use your imagination for now. I, I've got the... <laughs> actually, wait, no, I'm an idiot. I, I have the <laughs> thing. Actually, if you're in the student of the gun discord right now watching live as many of you could be if you wanted to uh and we're not going to stop you from doing that so if you want to watch us live and, and see how the how the uh the sausage is made or how the the cookies are crumbled or whatever yep you can do that i'm going to upload so, it into the discord right now and then i'm going to throw it up on the screen this is approximately what it's going to be looking like all right in let's three, see that two, two four Five, six, <laughs> seven. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, cinco, seis. Hey, there we go. There we go. All right. That is the silhouette of the world famous, the world famous Tiger Woods photo. And uh, they're like, it wasn't actually Tiger Woods, was it? You know, if if we if we Photoshop that and darkened my skin up a little bit, like made my skin a little bit yeah. Samoan looking. People there we go. There you go. Was. There's the picture. There that, you go. That is what the picture will look like. It will be a three by four uh, little sticker. You can slap it on your laptop, your filing cabinet, your face. I don't know. Yeah, slap it on anything you want to. And slap at the time things. of release, these should be available right now on shopsotg.com. I repeat, on the time of release, these will be available nice. on shopsotg.com. Yeah, right. The most com. important thing for them to do is go to jaredmarkle.com that is and get in on the ODS raffle. There you go. Yes. All right, Blade Show West follow up. All right, yes, indeed. We told you we were going to do it. We we threatened to appear live in Salt Lake City, and we made good on our threat. And uh, we did on Friday morning. We uh, hot footed it downtown to the Salt Palace, and we went to Blade Show West, and uh, it was a lot of fun. It was. It was a good time. Uh, I don't know how many tables there were. Hunt a couple of hundred had to been like several. Hundred. Yeah, there was quite a bit. It was there were more than I thought were going to be there. Yeah, there were several hundred, several hundred tables from uh, everywhere from like custom knife one man shops, like a one man shop custom knife makers, all the way up to the big the big guys like CRKT and spider co and who's oh tops knives had a really big booth and uh we knives had a big booth we we and then it wasn't just i mean knives of course it was knives and knife accessories like hardwood uh fancy wood scales and knife sharpening equipment and so on and so forth spider co had a large booth which you would expect spider co's in colorado so it's just a for them it was just a hop skip and a jump over from golden colorado uh golden is known for beer and knives and hippies and hippies yeah there's uh beer knives and hippies that's what you get in golden colorado uh, but uh, we saw our, our 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 good friend Joyce, uh, who I who I've known for at least twenty years. Probably it's no, it's at least twenty five years. It's longer than that. I've known her since the nineties. Yeah, and it's not the it's not the nineties anymore. It's not. <laughs> so I, I've known I've known Joyce from Spiderco for probably twenty five years or so, and uh, somebody else that I've I've known. For probably not so long, but I've been carrying his products and using his products for way longer than 25 years, uh, was Lynn C. Thompson, formerly of Cold Steel. And you're like, whoa, what do you mean formerly of? Well, if, if you follow the, uh, the knife world or the outdoor shooting sports world or, you know, uh, well, just the world in general of knives and, and tools and, and stuff. Uh, Lynn Thompson founded Cold Steel Knives uh, in the 80s, 
in the early ni- in the early 1980s he founded cold steel knives it might have been in the 70s oh i'm gonna i'm gonna look that up but at least 40 years ago okay uh and he sold recently he sold uh he sold the cold steel company to gsm up oh, 1980 i was right wow so he founded it in 1980 he founded Cold Steel Knives. Oh, Zach has called a flag on the field. Uh oh. <laughs> called false start. I did? Yep. For what? I see it. It says false oh. start up there. Hardy, 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 hard. That's a that's a five is it a five yard penalty? Yeah, five or ten yard, fifteen uh, yard. I don't think it's 15, 15 10. I don't 20, think it's a ten yard penalty. Yard penalty. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, you know. Anyway, so long story short. Um, I've known Lynn Thompson. I've I met him at a, one of the many trade shows many 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 years ago, um, and I saw him. He was he was patrolling around. Uh, he had his he had his posse, his one man posse with him, and he was patrolling around the the floor of Blade Show West. So we we took the time to have a little chat and snap some photos, and uh, that was it was nice. If you don't know anything about Lynn Thompson, Lynn Thompson is what I refer to. I don't know if anyone else in the business uses this terminology, but I do. He is the P.T. Barnum of the knife world. And if you don't know what that means, if you don't get the reference, then What's you... What's T.P. Barnum? P.T. Barnum. He is the P.T. Barnum of the knife world. So, and uh, any hooser. Isn't that the guy that jumped out of a plane and disappeared? But then it turned out that he was really nice. and No, no. He gave the, the hostess, a, or whatever you call them, a kiss on the way out as he jumped and then flew no. into the sunset really gently. Yeah, yeah, that's it exactly. You know, half of our audience doesn't know what the hell you're talking about. Oh, right? really? Yeah. So that was my impressions. Now, I'll be quiet, and, and you boys can give your impressions, because Jared and Zachary both went. I'll go first. My impressions are that it was bigger than I thought it'd be, because looking at the, the show map, Jesus. that's right. Looking at the show map, I was like, oh, this is going to be crunched into one area, which it, it was, but it was way bigger than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a little room. Like, you know, when you go to SHOT Show, and I just lost most of the Oh, audience, the, the but, side, ro- the yeah, side like rooms? Yeah, you go to the LE room, yeah. that's kind of what I thought it was going to be like. It was going to be like, like that really small one, but it wasn't. It was bigger than that, and there was, I'll tell you what, everybody there was very polite, at least everybody that I had experience with. Everybody was polite in the rows. Everybody was polite at the booths. There was no hard salespeople. Uh, there was some cool, there was a pocket dump challenge that we did, which was pretty cool. Um, I liked it from, because I, I like marketing stuff and I liked it from a marketing perspective. What was the name of that company? Uh, I can't remember. Oh, wow. I, I, if you look up pocket dump challenge, I bet it'll be. Well, that might be a thousand things. Yeah. Oh, give it me, is. I took videos yeah. and pictures. So give me about 10 seconds and I'll pull it up. Yeah. For yeah. But so they, they had these people in white lab coats they would write you a prescription. So they had this. They were, this they were thing. analyzing, yeah, your, they were pocket analyzing dump. your pocket dump. They yeah. had this checklist of stuff and they're like, they would say it and then you'd pull it out of your pocket or not if you didn't have it. And then at the end, they'd give you the card and they'd mark the things that you didn't have, but, but you, you should have. have. And, uh, and then, so after we did our pocket dump, dad and I, dad challenged me to a pocket dump. And after we did ours, I asked the dude to the, the doctor in the white lab coat. I was like, well, can you do a pocket dump? Because I know you have a ton well, of pockets. You, well, on. of course he was ready for it. Oh, for I mean, sure. he's not going to not be ready for, for it. For sure. They, they're, they, obviously, they have everything on their checklist and then some. And then some. But yeah. uh, so I asked him to do it afterwards, and he had uh, some pretty cool stuff on him. Uh, we all, all three of us actually ended up having the same flashlight, which was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. 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 I was like, hey, great hey, minds think we all had, yeah. the, we were all carrying the Surefire Stiletto. Yeah. Uh, it was a pretty cool experience. It's just something that's fun, but you get to learn something from too. And, uh, but yeah, so I was expecting like the doctors to have their lab coats stuffed full of stuff, you know, uh, that was sold by the company. That wasn't the case though. He's like, dude, I'm not even using the lab coat. I'm just going to pull the stuff out of my, My this is my everyday carry. I'm not going to use, I'm not going to cheat and use this lab coat. And then I asked him what the coolest or uh, most different, I guess, elaborate or elaborate, different pocket dump he ever experienced was. And he said that, there's a dude that came in that 
had a jacket on that was, uh, I guess this is probably like a wilderness survival expert of some sort. He had a jacket that had everything that the dude needed to walk into the woods and survive for a few days. You know what? Jared and I both have everything. When I get out of the shower, I have everything I need to survive in the woods. That's right. Because I, I'm, I'm trained now. I am now trained. Brains. And the name of the company, by the way, is EDC Specialists. Aha! Ah, there you you know, that's a little EDC Box Club. Is Are they the, like, specialists? The I mean, you took the Are test, they, so you tell are me. Are they special? I think and Jared's special. going to follow up with them about the kits. Yes. The C specialists, yeah. specialists. So in addition to that, so everybody was polite. I got to see some of my friends there. Nate the Blade Maker was there. We went oh, yeah, Nate them. was there, of course. Uh, we got there at like, we're amateurs apparently, because we got there at like 11 o'clock. We, we didn't have the... Uh, at 10. Um, what you call it the early um, birds the early bird special we didn't yeah. have the early bird special i didn't realize that people lined up i heard one dude talking about how he got there at midnight the night before so that he can get in there and i guess there's probably show specific knives that you can only get there so the knife collectors that are serious about it they'll show up and get in line and and uh, make sure that they can get that knife that they want before they're out of stock oh yeah here it is midnight. here's their website it's crazy right here EDC specialties, everyday carry essentials, and EDC kits. There you go. There you go. There you go. So they got a, lots of gizmos and gadgets and and stuff on there. Um, we we didn't get a lot. We didn't get a lot of time to talk, but uh, you know, obviously, we promote the fundamental four. And you know, he he's like, oh, do you have a pen? Do you have some kind of a pocket tool? Do you have a bottle opener? Do you have a, you know, stuff like that. Uh, which is nice, but that's not fundamental. Mm -hmm. Fundamental is lethal, sharp, right, medical. Fundamental four is your is your MED, your minimum effective dose. Of that's stuff. right. You can carry that's more the, than that. The minimum. I, minimum. I didn't say it's the max. It's the minimum. Yeah. A pen is sharp. I mean, well, it could be a, you know, well, not really. I'm not going to. Or gonna, is it pokey? A pe pokey. I, I was going to say stabby. It's stabby. A it's pen pokey is stabby. Thing. Yeah. So Zach, what was your what was your uh, takeaway from Blade Show West? My takeaway from Blade Show West was it was really cool and very expensive. The, every, to get in? No, just like everything there because I I went in. It was with inexpensive the, to get in. Yeah, it was inexpensive no, I, to get in. But can, can I can I make a correction real quick? Go for it. The really cool custom stuff was definitely expensive, but there are some places I don't know if you've if you're aware of the MSRP on a lot of the items that were there from like CRKT and spider co and, and companies like that. I don't know about the local guys, but the show deals were fantastic on some of these. Oh yeah. Things. Yeah. The, yeah. the show deals. Like I, I, I looked, I went to some of the knife uh, manufacturers yeah. websites afterwards and it was, it was a way better deal yeah. if you bought it at the show. So I just wanted to clarify that. I'll kick it back over to Zach. Cause I'm sure he's talking about the, the custom, like the cool stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, like really cool stuff. And like, yeah, the like gladiuses, I, I, like the for handmade example, the, broadswords and yeah. gladius. Yeah. And, what was your example, Zach? No, like uh, the, the very tiny knife, which people really like that on Facebook. If you look on the, if you are watching oh, the, the little video dagger, version, yeah, the little, the tiny little dagger, the tiny that says dagger on it. Uh, that was five hundred dollars, I think. I didn't Hold see that. Closer, tiny the, dagger. If you look at the screen, you should be able to see it. Uh, or can, can you, you see put a picture of it on the show? Uh, There's I, one on our fascist book page. I'm not on there. Up, 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 up. Up, but up, but up, but up, but up. Party foul. Are you going to echo it? Oh, there we go. Oh, that one. Hold yeah, me that closer, one. Tiger, yeah. tiger. That was super expensive. And, and the big version of it was $1,000. And I went in there with the uh, the thought that yeah, maybe I'll get like a... Like, because I, for whatever reason, I wanted a meat cleaver, right? That's something I've wanted. But you can't find him anymore. You wanted a meat cleaver? Yes, I wanted a meat cleaver. Like beaver hottie, hottie, or hottie, Wally, hottie. both of them. And I was like, maybe I'll get a, like a fancy, nice one here. The cheapest one I saw was 150 bucks. Yeah. So I was like, but, yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Oh but, yeah, they're, they're custom stuff. Yeah, I know, but still. Um, How, I didn't so, know yeah. you wanted a meat cleaver. Yeah, I've been looking around around for one. Okay. The the only place I've been able to find one like at a store around here is IKEA, and they've been sold out for the last six months. Which oh. makes me think they're just like not stocking them anymore but they still love to display so i'm mad about that anyway don't buy uh, there one. was what don't buy a meat cleaver okay 
uh, the there was a lot of really cool stuff, a lot of really cool people. Like like you said, we talked to a lot of fun people there. Um, it, it was just it was like being a kid in a candy shop, except you have no money. And I was like <laughs> I was like Charlie in the candy shop. I was looking. You around, bought like, something. I did buy one something. I yeah. bought myself a pair of what? What are they called? Like That's white. A, you Viper, bought a paperweight. Orange Viper. Something Viper. I bought a paperweight that I can put my fingers in, in the shape of hey. some knuckles. I bought That's a pair. Right. Of, I That's right. That's what it is. Yeah. And they are blue and shiny, and I like them. There you go. But yeah, it was a, it was a I good see. time. I had a lot it's of. It's not fun really a pair. It's just stuff. one. But uh, well, I mean, it's it's, it's actually five a pair of pants. Yeah, do you You're put a on a pants. pants or do you put on a pair? A of set? Pants? I don't know. Exactly. Uh, well, yeah, that's, that's it. That's the. Uh, oh, and we did see uh, some some students of the gun. We we saw we ran into some students of the gun, which was nice. Uh, so we saw people that uh, we saw a few of our old friends, and then we met a lot of uh, potentially new friends. So there you go. There you go. All right, let's. It's time for us to just keep on going and roll right into the Duracoat Finish Firearm of the Week. All right. Duracoat Finish Firearm of the Week brought to you by our friends at Duracoat Firearm Finishes. Makes sense, right? So we've been we promised to do this, and we were kind of teasing you a little bit with it last week. Uh, so we did the three pistols, one can challenge, and not really a challenge, but we did three pistols, one can with uh, slightly darker black. Last week we talked about having the slightly darker black in our hot little hands from our buddies at Duracoat. And uh, so I'm going to hold it up for the audience. You can switch cameras so we can get a close-up on this. Uh, this is my G48. This is, And you're like, wow, it's so dark I can barely see it. I know, it's slightly darker black. Uh, what I did, well, this gun, I've been carrying this gun every single day for basically three-plus years now, probably a little more than three years. Uh, the Well, however old this gun is, I got one that year. So the year that they released these, I got this one, and it is the single column nine millimeter, uh, basically about the same size uh, lengthwise and height wise as a Glock 19, but it's thinner. Uh, it's a little bit lighter. Uh, actually, it's a skosh longer. When when Jared disassembled his G19 and I disassembled this one, we discovered that the uh, that the barrel of the 48 is just a little bit longer than the 19 uh but i do have uh, if you can see those i don't know if you can see it there you go oh yeah you can see it as i wiggle it around you can see the uh, the super bright uh neon safety green accurate front sight from night vision on there uh yeah so the point is is even if it's a glock or or, or any gun Glock finishes hold up really well, but the fact is, if you carry a gun in a holster every single day, year after year, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, you're going to get holster wear on it. That's just going to happen, and it'll you know it wears on the edges and the uh, the slide lock right there on Glocks. You can tell people who actually carry their Glocks because the slide lock component is silver. Am, am I lying or am I dying, Jared? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's absolutely true. Ours were both the same. Uh, we carried both our guns for about the same amount of time, and both of our slide locks were because these don't get the uh, the slide locks don't get the the Glock Tenifer finish. They just get like a quick passing of black paint in the factory, yeah. and uh, or whatever they put on them. Uh, so we completely disassembled our guns. I did a G forty eight. We did Jared's G19, and then I knew I was going to have a little bit of, of uh, Duracoat left over. So I uh, disassembled my Canic, the TP9 SF Elite, this SF Elite, which is essentially the Canic version of the Glock 19. They're essentially the same size. Both of them hold 15 rounds, yada, yada. And uh, that one has an in, has a... Uh, a uh, slide finish from an inferior finish company and it was it was worn it had the 
it had the wear marks, you know, the holster wear marks. And so I thought, what the heck? I'll, I'll disassemble that one. And uh, uh, we use one can of the can in can slightly darker black Duracoat. And we were, I did the, we did the frames, the slides, uh, and the barrels, uh, and the barrels. We did the frames, the slides, and the barrels. Uh, I am not going to, I'm going to, we did that this weekend and I'm going to leave this be, I'm going to let it cure and get it super hard before I start carrying it again. I got another gun. I got a different clock that I'm carrying as my, my everyday carry now, uh, and that is my advice to you guys. Now, obviously, after an hour or two, you can touch them and they're, you know, they're not sticky or anything like that. But you really want to give the Duracoat, because you don't have to bake Duracoat. That's one of the great things about Duracoat is you do not have to put it in an oven at 250 degrees or 300 degrees or whatever. So you can do optics. You can do electronic, you know, optics, or you can do magnified optics or scopes or whatever. Whereas some of the the old company, the old ones where they're like, oh, yeah, just put it on and stick it in your oven at 250 degrees for an hour, which is fine. But I don't want to take my thousand dollar loophole scope, paint it and stick it in an oven, you know, a 250 or 300 degree oven for an hour. <laughs> I think loophole would frown on that. They were like, mm, how about you don't do that? Um so with the uh, the Duracoat, you do not need to. Now you can, if you have a pro shop, uh, if you have a professional finishing shop, you can hang the stuff in an oven and you know for half hour, hour or whatever, and harden it up, no problem. You know, Bob's your uncle, Bing Bang Boom. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you're doing it at your house and you're using the Canon Can technology, uh, just do it. And then res <laughs> discipline yourself and leave the gun alone for a little bit. <laughs> Just discipline yourself, leave the gun alone, let it harden. Then when it's hardened, then you can go and start carrying it again, shooting it again, and so on and so forth. So there you go. That is the three can. And, and we did have, after doing three pistols, slides, uh, frames, barrels, you know, and then doing the, the touch up coats and so forth. We still did have a little bit left over, but that's okay. It's better to have a little bit left over than to run out. Uh, what, what Duracoat will tell you is one can per long gun and then, uh, one can for two handguns. But I mean, these are little handguns and they're little, you know, concealed carry guns. So they're not that big. They don't have that much surface area on them. Uh, would you say that it was a successful project? Or? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I would say so. And what is the most important thing to do if you're going to refinish a gun, Jared? Uh, strip it first. Make sure that there's no oil or dirt or anything on it. That's right. You got to do the prep. You got to put in the prep time. Get all the oil and the grease and the hoppies number nine and the CLP. Get all that crap off of there. Use your, sl your uh, true strip cinnamon. Uh, and they have a product called no sand. Now you can sandblast if you have a sandblasting container, uh, sandblast box, you can, shh, you know, sandblast it. But if you don't have that, they have a product called no sand that you can rough it up. We might have some new listeners that are wondering how you're using cinnamon to <laughs> strip the stuff off of the cinnamon is my favorite stripper name. That's right. I'm going to call you cinnamon. Is, Do I look like a stripper? Yeah, yeah but in a good, good way. Time. Yeah, the good way. In a good way. I'm just going to call you cinnamon okay cinnamon thank you <laughs> uh, sds imports they make stuff yes they do they make oh and go to duracoat finish firearms or follow the link in the show notes to uh more information about uh duracoat, duracoat firearm finishes.com that's right sds imports.com that's where you find out about their shotguns about their 1911s about the 10 millimeter 1911 about the px9 generation 3 which we believe uh is probably if you're a firearms trainer if you're running a school if you're thinking about running a school uh if you're thinking about doing firearms training what you need you're going to have to have a backup gun like, no i won't yes you will Trust me, I've been there, done that, gotten the t-shirt. At some point in time, you will have a student show up for class and you say, you got everything you need? Yep, sure do. And they come out and they fire the first string of fire 
and their pistol breaks or they don't have a front sight on it or something. So you can do one of two things. You can say, well, we, we took the time to come to the range today. Here we are. We've got ammo and range time, but now you don't have a gun that works. So I guess, screw it. We'll just leave. Or you can rent them or loan them a handgun to use to complete the training. And if you want to do something like that, well, I think, I believe that the the standard, the, the, the PX9 Gen 3 duty gun, the, it doesn't have any bells or whistles. You don't need a threaded, you know, you know, the rental gun doesn't need a threaded barrel. The rental gun doesn't need to have an RMR on it or whatever. Just the standard duty version. Uh, that'll get them by. And, you know, just get, get a, a holster, uh, three magazines. I think it comes with, it might come with two. Um, have at least three with it and you'll be good to go. It'll be a good rental gun. So if you guys, if you guys are out there, and you're a potential firearms instructor or you're maybe you're running a school or whatever and you need rental guns these guns are they're rock solid they the the they're simple to operate they they they're striker fired so there's there's no decocking levers there's no manual slide mounted safeties or anything weird like that uh it's a real easy to teach gun and if you're looking for a spare gun or an extra gun or a rental gun or loaners or whatever that are the c9 <laughs> speaking of which so that's uh that's our buddies at sds imports the title sponsor of the show thank you very much uh our boys at high point we actually had a testimonial we had a testimonial come in last week oh after we talked about it last week yeah after we talked about it last week kevin said that he took fighting pistol with a uh, cy9 a yeet cannon the 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 current yeet cannon uh not the whatever um so he took it with the cy9 the cy9 yeah the g1 cy9 g1 and he said the gun ran fine but he broke the holster so i don't know what holster is used. <laughs> that's that's actually different because holsters don't have moving parts so yeah you're like well the gun ran fine but i broke my holster I'm like okay that's one way to do it so, so yeah, you just had to be in you just had to be special right kevin you just had to be special you just had to be different right uh and uh, he did say that his little hobbit hands uh had a hard time reaching the the safety uh manual safety on that and uh i can see that i can see that that is the one now if you have good size digits uh you can sweep and take that safety off i've done it uh, it's not as instinctive as some of the larger ones. Like it's not as instinctive as an AR 15 or whatever, but uh, it can be done with training. It can be done with training. Now, the only downside to taking a training class, um, with, a is that the mags are either eight rounds or 10 rounds. And with everybody, sta everyone around you is going to have 17 to 20 rounds in their magazines. So you're going to get a lot of mag loading and mag changing uh, in. Yeah. Of course, the tactical response, if you take fighting pistol from them, they level the playing field by whether you've got a, a slimline eight shot or a 20 round XD magazine, you're, everybody's changing mags at the same time. Yeah. So that, that doesn't matter. But uh, yeah. That is uh, that is that was a testimonial, and we wanted to acknowledge that testimonial. And Kevin said he took a two-day fighting pistol class, and the gun ran fine. And uh, we'll have to get a, set up a GoFundMe to buy Kevin a new holster for his uh, his CY9 for yeah. his high point. <laughs> and he's out there. He's like, really? <laughs> not really. No, Kevin, not really. We're not really gonna. We're not we're not starting a GoFundMe for a holster. You you have to buy your own. Uh, Jukesy dot com is where you go if you want to watch videos. And if you don't, if you're worried, if you're concerned that someday fascist book and YouTube and Google are going to take your firearms content and make it disappear, that's a valid. That is a very valid uh, feeling. And how do we get around that? How do we avoid that? Well. You go over to juxxijuxi.com, and when you get there, you sign up, 
and you follow student of the gun because we're not beholden to google uh or youtube or fascist book or any of those other scumbags and uh, even if they take all of our stuff down on uh, google and youtube and insta garbage and all that it, the Juxy channel will still be there because we control it if you've got uh, if you want to go directly to student of the gun channel on Juxy, go to student of the gun.com slash J U X X I makes sense. Yeah. And the video that I'm looking at right now, that's on the homepage says two ways to work the Mossberg 590 with a pistol grip. Yep. Now, if you have a pistol grip shotgun, it doesn't have to be a Mossberg 590. It can no. be a, something with similar controls, if, but if it has a pistol grip and you want to be able to run it well or run it better than you can now, Go watch this video. It's two ways to work the Mossberg 590 with a pistol grip. Pimp hand pointer number five. Yeah, the reason we did that is because uh, people kept saying, well, you know, pistol grips are nice, but I would never put one on a Mossberg because you can't. I love it when people say can't because you can't work the safety or you can't reach the safety. I was like, you and either I, choose I, not to or you just don't know how yet. I was like, that's weird because i do i didn't i, I w i'm kind of like in that regard like eddie van halen you know eddie van halen never took guitar lessons so he didn't know what he wasn't supposed to do and when people say oh you can't do that with that gun i was like i didn't know you couldn't because yeah. all these years later i've been doing that <laughs> well so there you go if you follow student of the gun you'll learn things you learn things all right time for us to be quiet and uh, for all you new listeners to perk up your ears and listen louder attention new listeners we produced a complimentary online training course called seven training tips that could save your life get instant access by joining the student lounge for free at studentofthegun.com do you watch student of the gun tv read the blog and follow us on facebook if you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Yeah, that's what you should do. That's what we think you should do. Uh, and we appreciate it if you do that. All right. Let's go ahead and jump right into our Brownells bullet points brought to you by Brownells.com. All right. Yes, indeed. Oh, I don't know how long ago it was. It was it was one of these uh, w these influencer people. They said that that uh, here's why drum magazines are a bad idea, and they take too long to load. That's one of my favorite ones. I like. Um, what? They take too long to load. Like too long? How? Like months? Like takes a week to load, or I don't have the time, or like. When do you think you're going to be loading magazines? You know, Jared, do people load magazines and then, well, yeah, it's like, no, nah, man, it's like the norm. Nah, I'm like laying in the rice paddy, reloading my magazines in the middle of the firefight. And like, bro, bro, bro. Reality check here. People who say, oh, it's, it uh, takes too long to reload the magazine. Okay. And the other one is, oh, it's, it's too difficult. Too difficult how because you have to actually use your brain and <laughs> have some coordination in your body uh the the fact of the matter is is i'm an american and if i want to have five hundred thousand rounds preloaded into my gun i should be able to do that and i shouldn't have to ask permission from anyone because i'm not a slave and you don't own me you can preload five hundred thousand rounds into your gun i'm gonna do that that's amazing i'm gonna do that i, mean, I don't know how all right, all you Star Wars official uh, Wikipedia people, how many shots can you get from an Imperial Blaster before it needs to be reloaded? <sighs> Apparently, it's hundreds. Um, you know, it's funny. Is Chewbacca wore a bandolier? That was he didn't have any clothes, but he always wore a bandolier because yeah. that was supposedly the spare ammo for his bowcaster. 
But not one time did I ever see him reload that thing. And the bullets were always there. Yeah. Pew, pew. There were never missing bullets. Yeah, pew, pew. Oh, yeah, the, the, the cartridge things yeah. in his bandolier. Those, yeah, they're, they're never really missing. But it was cool. You know, he had a... They had to put something on him. They're like, if if he just stands there, then it'll look like he's like a naked ape, like an animal. So we got to give him something. So his clothing was a great big bandolier for his bowcaster, uh, which is apparently a very powerful weapon uh, that that Han Solo apparently hung out with Chewbacca for thirty five years, and it wasn't until right before he died that he shot. Chewie's bowcaster for the first time, which is kind of unbelievable. But they never went to the range together. Apparently not. Uh, But getting back to the real world, the really real world. uh, And if you want to see a bowcaster video, we did one. We did a Hoth Report bowcaster video that should be on Wikipedia. It shouldn't it? Yes. I think the, the Hoth Report should be on Wikipedia. But I digress. If you have a, uh, a a pistol caliber carbine that takes G lock magazines, if you have a uh, scorpion or an MP5 or the AP5 from Century, what did we just talk about recently, Jared? What was the new cool thing that I thought was really neat that that Century did? Uh. They brought in the 9mm AK pistol that used what? I don't know. Scorpion mags. Remember? I don't know. If, did we talk about that? Yeah, we talked about it oh, on, on the show. show. Yeah, on the show. Meant, I thought you meant off the show. No, no, no. Here on the show with, with all of our friends. Yeah, okay. And we, we talked about how people like it because the Scorpion magazines are curved, not straight, like Glock magazines. Yeah. And it really makes mechanically no difference. It makes no difference mechanically, but aesthetically... People just get bun. They're like, but the mag's supposed to curve. Yeah, but not. But it's supposed to curve. It's supposed to do. It doesn't. It doesn't look right. And so Century's like, okay, we heard you. Why don't we just make one that takes Scorpion mags? And we pointed out how smart they were because who started making the curvy Scorpion mags that you could find and were inexpensive? Magpul, right? Well, Magpul said. We can do one better. They've got a 50-round D50. They have a D50 9mm drum that works with the Scorpions, and it also works with the Century AKs, the 9mm AKs that take Scorpion mags. Like, oh. This is when people are like, dude, okay, now that I know I can put a 50-round drum in it, I want one. And I'm there with you. Seriously. I'm right. You and me, me and you, you, me, 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 you, you, me, you, me, 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 you. We're right there together. Yeah. Uh, people who don't know that movie are like, what is he doing? Is he having a stroke or something? Is <laughs> he having a stroke or something? Uh, they've got two different kinds of Glock mags. The reason they did that was because... Uh, if you put the standard one in a pistol caliber carbine, you have like the the stick part. It kind of just sticks out, and they're like, eh, "Do we really need that part sticking out?" Because if you have a pistol caliber carbine, you kind of want the drum to be flush, right? Yeah. So they've got two of them. They've got the uh, the D uh, the D fifty GL Niner uh, for pistol caliber carbines, and then they have the the D fifty GL nine for actual pistols. Uh, Glock frames uh, and the Scorpions, and of course, if you've got one of the the really neat AP fives from Century, the they've got a drum mag for that, which you want, you just do. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to jump over while you talk to the audience here, and I'm going to jump over to H HK Parts. Dot com and hkparts.com is actually here in utah oh that's right they're down in uh they're draper, draper. Yeah. yeah they're in draper uh, so they sell official hk parts components springs magazines stocks everything now let me let me hip you to something actual genuine 
Heckler and Coke, German manufactured, a 30 rounder is $79.95 for one magazine. So for ten more dollars, you can buy a fifty round drum from Magpul. This is when you say, Oh, I like that. Yes. You're like, Oh, I like that. Now to the now they actually have them back in stock. Last year, year and a half ago, when I was looking for these, they were all pff, nope. Out of stock, out of stock, out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. They're back in stock. Uh and we don't, the the guys at HK Parts don't know us. Uh, we know them because we buy stuff from them, but they don't know us. Uh, but uh, if you buy something, say, "Hey, Student of the Gun sent me," and they'll say, "Who the hell is Student of the Gun?" <laughs> 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 they're like, "Thank you, but who the hell is Student of the Gun?" Uh, and they're like, "You don't know. You need to. You need to listen louder." That's right. If you don't know, you need to listen louder, freaks. Uh, yes, indeed. So that is your uh, that's your Brownells bullet point of the week. They've got drums, and uh, if you are intelligent enough and have the the time to load one, well, then you can take advantage of them. I know some people out there, some influencers, some social media influencers are like, "Oh, drums! It takes too long to load it. It's too hard. It hurts my little, my delicate little thumbs." Good. Don't buy one. That leaves more for me. <laughs> There's more for me. All right, moving on. Uh, now it's time for me to be quiet and let Zach talk. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Oh, uh, thank you, Zachary. Now, do you want to tell them about the, uh, the what's new on ShopSOTG.com? You want this? Uh, yeah, we, we now, we teased you the other week, uh, and it's uh, it's finally here. We have the LMIT Limit Kit. Uh, I think it was available last week. I don't remember, actually. But the Limit Kit, which is the Laceration and Minor Injury Kit, is available right now on ShopSOTG.com. It is a small, compact little kit, perfect for if you get a cut or a scrape or any kind of boo-boo. Or any any kind of laceration, really. I mean, you can do a major laceration with this if you wanted to. Uh, But, yeah, it it comes with... with, uh, Cohesive, flexible bandage, what some people call Coban. Uh, it comes with gauze, three-inch roll, uh, three roll of gauze, and it's three inches wide, but I think it's, are they, is it five yards long or three yards long? A million yards long. I actually don't remember. I think it's <laughs> the, the Coban, I believe, is five yards. I, oh, I think the gauze is five, too. The gauze is the three gauze. yards, I believe. It's three yards, okay. I believe. And a pair of non-latex nitrile gloves. To protect your widow hands and uh, uh, they're super inexpensive compared to the normal kits so get one get two get three and no reason not to have them one for everyone no. in the family that's right that's right you should have them everywhere everywhere you go yes you know the 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 may may of with uh, um the who's the senior chicken guy from breaking bad gus Gustavo Fring. Come on, Zach. Say yes. Yes, Gustavo Fring. All right. You know the May May of him, right? The one where he's straightening his tie? Yes. And it's the we are not the same one. Yesterday, I had a we are not the same moment. It's like when I, when, when I went to use the restroom at our friend's house and they're uh, on, the, on the shelf over the toilet was a, uh, uh, a kit full of medical gear and there was a tourniquet right there right there it with an arm to reach it's like we keep tourniquets in our bathroom we are not the same right <laughs> yeah you have you have a plastic box under your kitchen sink we have tourniquets in our bathroom we're not the same that was my gustavo friend <laughs> <That's pretty funny. laughs> 
So there you go. Check out the limit kit at shopsotg.com. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our dangerous on demand segment. That's our student of the gun homeroom from Crossbreed. All right, Crossbreed Holster is all about being dangerous on demand. Carry your freaking gun. Yeah, how about that for an idea? And if you want to carry your freaking gun all the time, not just occasionally, uh, like it's some kind of party favor, go to CrossbreedHolsters.com, get a 100% made-in-the-USA holster, high-quality items, belts. Uh, they got stuff for chicks. If you're a gun-carrying chick, they got stuff for you. And when you, before you sign out or before you check out, use the promotional code SOTG. That'll let them know that we sent you, and uh, it's a good thing. It's actually a very good thing. So, uh, dangerous on demand, or see, we say dangerous on demand. Over at Tactical Response, what do they say, Jared? Your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends. And this is an absolute perfect example of why you need to a be dangerous on demand and b understand that your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends why is that phallus with ears on the story okay video i don't know yeah i don't know so i bet you that your local news station did not hammer this yesterday uh this weekend i bet you your local news station uh i know that the uh, that the Sunday shows didn't bring on experts and yada 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 to uh, well to talk about this because this is not the story that the scumbags in Washington D.C. and their sycophant media want you focusing on because everything in this story demonstrates how wrong and dangerous liberalism is. Liberalism is a mental disease. And this story demonstrates the danger of that mental disease. Jared, go ahead. And, this is from October 7th, just a couple of days ago. Las Vegas stabbing suspect is in U.S. illegally. He's an illegal invader, but he wasn't flying below the radar. And he has a criminal record in California. That means he's been arrested in California, but not deported or in jail. Yanni Berrios allegedly stabbed eight people on the Las Vegas Strip in a fit of rage, authorities have said. Oh, it was a rage. Oh, okay. The suspect accused of killing two people and injuring six others. Dirty. So are those two people allegedly dead? Maybe he was allegedly stabbing people in a fit of rage. Yeah, well, it says he allegedly stabbed Maybe them, he but... he wasn't raging. Maybe he but, was just calm. But two people are dead, and six others are in the hospital being stitched back up. So are they allegedly injured and allegedly dead? Or are they actually dead? Oh, that's right. They're actually dead because this scumbag actually stabbed them to death. Yanni Berrios, 32, is a Guatemala national in the u.s illegally with a criminal record in california a source a source with u.s immigration and customs enforcement said barrios allegedly stabbed eight people a mix of tourists and residents just after 11 40 a.m local tide on the sidewalk near the Wynn las vegas hotel is that a, a bad neighborhood in the middle of the night no but that's the, that's the only time I carry my I mean, gun. Unless you consider the Las Vegas Strip a bad neighborhood. Well, yeah, you yeah, could so. argue that, right? Well, yeah, that's true. But it was in the middle of the night. Yeah, and people. actually, the wind is... Yeah. The wind's on the good side of town. Oh, yeah. Two yes. people, Las Vegas residents, Brent Allen Hallett, 47, and Maris Maureen DiGiovanni, 30, they died. So a 30-year-old and a 47-year-old were killed by this dude. Allegedly. They're allegedly, yeah, dead. allegedly dead. Yeah, we're not the sure if they're dead. They're allegedly dead. They remain hospitalized. Berrios allegedly began his rampage after a group of showgirls refused to take a picture with him. That must have made him mad. He Probably because he's a, a psycho scumbag. He approached a group of women and said that he was a chef. Local news edition KTNV reported. He used what authorities described as a large knife with a long blade. 
and began attacking when they rebuffed him. Berrios was detained by Sands security guards and Metropolitan Police officers while running on a strip sidewalk. So is he stripping on the sidewalk? No. Is that what it is? There were no other suspects involved. Uh, he was charged, or he will be charged, with two counts of murder and six counts of attempted murder when he appears in court next week. Clark County District Attorney Steve Wolfson said that said Friday, uh, Barrios was briefly appeared in court Friday for a bail review where his hands were covered in what appeared to be orange padding. Okay. Yeah, those are the uh those are the, the 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 sleeves the things that they put their hands in so they can't grab and you know do bad stuff. How come the story doesn't give any background of his criminal history but they mention it? I I bet you you could get it from another story. Uh Maris uh, always saw the uh yeah, it's just the, the people who knew the the deceased, you know, they're like, yeah. "Oh, this is terrible." Well, they're dead because of liberalism. They're dead because of Democrats. They're dead because California and Washington, D.C. are run by criminals. They're dead because we allow these monsters to come into our country. Then when we catch them and capture them and identify them as monsters, instead of dealing with them, like putting them in a prison cell or ejecting them from our country, we don't. The the people, the, the families of the victims should be able to sue Gavin Newsom and Sniffy Joe Biden for allowing these scumbags to come into our country. But they won't. And even if they did those scumbags would steal the money from the taxpayers and hide behind the money uh, that the, that they stole. They would use the taxpayer money. And even if, you know, that's that's the, the, the sick thing about the system that we're running right now. Let's say that the families of these victims do get a payout from the state for gross negligence. But they're still dead. They'll steal the money from the peasants. That's where they'll get it. You see, this is what happens when you allow liberalism to run rampant in your country. This is what happens when you do not stand up for the rule of law and you allow fake usurpers to take the White House and open the border up. You see, we were in the process of securing the border. We actually had the border under control until the usurper was installed into the White House, and then they undid everything that we had done the previous four years. You people in California won't pull your heads out of your collective rectums and take your state back from the communists. So criminals, you know, hey, what was it? We did a whole entire story, uh, a series of stories, about the illegal invader who, quote, found a gun and then murdered a California resident and then was let out by the California courts. Illegal invaders can come into your country. They can come into America and murder American citizens and the government whose job it is to protect you does nothing. They do nothing. It's worse than nothing. They catch them and let them go. This is the sick, twisted catch and release program that we're, that liberals are running in our country. And these people are dead because of liberals like Sniffy Joe and Gavin Newsom. When is the media going to hold them accountable for this? Oh, let me guess. It's the, Is it the NRA's fault? You see, that's why this weekend you didn't hear this story. That's why the the Fox, not Fox News, the uh, who are the idiots that gather every Sunday the um, CBS, whatever, the CBS News Hour with the Jim Lehrer. That's why they didn't hammer on this all day Sunday on the Sunday shows about because, well, 
we can't blame we can't blame Trump for this. We can't blame the NRA for this. We can't blame the the MAGA the MAGA extremist white racist gun owners. We can't blame them for this. So we're just not going to talk about it. So the story from ABC is actually way more in depth. It gives a little bit more background on both the suspect and also the incident. So apparently he presented the, the knife and told them that he was a chef, right? So I'm assuming that the knife that he stabbed his victims with was a chef's knife. A kitchen knife or something, yeah. Yeah. It says that he arrives, talking about Barrios, he arrived on the strip Thursday morning toting a suitcase that included his knives and dressed in what appeared to be a chef's uniform. Mm-hmm. Why isn't he in prison? In an interview with detectives, Barrios reportedly said he asked chauffeurs at Wynn for a ride back to California. He then walked into the hotel and asked a janitor about job opportunities and to contact Immigration and Customs Enforcement for him so that he could return home to Guatemala. Uh, okay. He reportedly told security, a security guard, that he was attempting to sell his knives so he could get money to return to Guatemala. I presume that the security guard, like, it's like, hey, man, why do you have those knives in our place? <laughs> what are yeah. you doing? Uh, to which the security guard at the casino allegedly responded, go jump in front of a train. <laughs> Barrios allegedly has a criminal history in California. Allegedly. Including driving under the influence and a domestic violence episode, but nothing that would have made a noticeable risk to the community, the source said. Really? So how about being in the country illegally? He is believed to have had a wife and children in California and went to Vegas to stay with a male friend. Detectives are investigating what that relationship was and seeking out other acquaintances. Here's the deal. We know that a person who's in the country illegally was arrested by California police officers. They had him in the system. They knew, hey, this guy's not supposed to be in the country, but this is California. And we're a bunch of liberal scumbags. So even though we have captured someone who's not supposed to be in our country, well, well, that just doesn't mean we're, we're, we kick them out. We'll just let them go. We'll just let them go. And now, now American citizens are dead because they just let them go. Now, remember, stop. This is still the crossbreed holster student of the gun homeroom. This is still about being dangerous on demand. So in addition to all of the other bovine excrement that we've had to deal with, why wasn't this son of a gun shot down into the ground? I don't know, Paul. Why wasn't he? Exactly. So we've got a lunatic running around stabbing people. Two are dead. Six are in the hospital with, I don't know, whatever. I mean, if you get stabbed a bunch of times, you're going to have a heart. That's that's uh, what we would call uh, death or serious bodily harm. You're going to have serious bodily harm. Not one person was present to shoot this scumbag into the ground. Why? It says he was detained by sand security. Why didn't sand security shoot him into the ground? He's a deadly force threat. He just murdered people. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. But here's what I know. Whether it's Las Vegas or downtown uh, Mayberry, USA, or whatever, you have to be dangerous on demand because it's not about you. You're like, well, I don't go to places where I shouldn't be. I don't go to bad neighborhoods. I don't stay out late at night. I don't blah, blah, blah. It's not about you, dummy. When I hear people say that, you know, still, well, I don't carry a gun all the time because I'm not paranoid. Oh, you're not paranoid? What does that have to do with anything? It's not about you. 
That's where we get tripped up. That's where people get tripped up. Good people who should be doing the right thing, they're like, well, I don't. Who told you it was about you? Who told you that you get to decide when, a, when an illegal invader goes schizo and starts murdering people in the middle of the day on a public street? Who told you that you get to make that decision? Who told you that your feelings are going to influence whether that happens or whether it doesn't happen? Because they don't. Your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends. Whether it's 1140 a.m. on a public street or late at night or in your bedroom or wherever you happen to be. And that, that includes, you know, like, un, and then people say, well, I'm not allowed. Well, okay. Are you allowed to be stabbed to death? There you go. Because in California and Las Vegas, you are. You're allowed to be stabbed to death. They'll let illegal invaders who they previously arrested and not kicked out of the country, they'll let them roam around until they just get the inkling or the feeling to stab you to death. And why shouldn't they? Jared. Why shouldn't illegal invaders murder American citizens? What's their punishment going to be? I guess we'll find out. There is no punishment. There is no punishment. The state won't punish him. They're going to put this guy in the chair and fry him? If they do, it'll be 20 years from now. Nobody will ever remember. See, the state doesn't care about you. You're just a statistic. You see, to the state, you are a statistic. You are what they call uh, what they call collateral damage. You are the 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 reasonable uh, casualty number. You see, if you get shot to death, the state loves that because then they can call for the disarmament of the American citizen. So. The state loves it when you get shot to death. If you get stabbed to death, well, they'll just go ahead and ignore it, sweep it under the rug, and, you know, just another dead citizen. No big deal. Nothing to see here. Moving on. Yep. All right, let's go to the main story of the day, the main topic of the day. Foreign agents team up with federal criminals, with bureaucratic criminals from D.C. to what? What were they what were they doing? They were trying to do a sting to get illegal psychopaths out of the country, right? That's what they're trying to do. No. No, they're trying to harass American gun owners. Jared, read the story. This is from the Helena Air.com. Helena, Montana, that is. Cascade County Sheriff breaks up federal investigation at gun show. Pay attention. Cascade County Sheriff Jesse Slaughter on Saturday broke up an investigation carried out in apparent con- coordination between federal and Canadian authorities at a Great Falls gun show. Great Falls, Montana. Saying those agencies had not contacted his office beforehand. No, they're not gonna they're not gonna talk to the locals. Screw those hillbilly peasants. Although state law does not require federal investigators to obtain approval from local law enforcement to conduct operations the agents left the fairgrounds reluctantly and without issue slaughter has positioned himself as a constitutional sheriff which theorizes the sheriffs are the ultimate authority in the country in their county i mean above local state and federal officials i, I like how they say it theorizes it's not a theory it's law Raises question, raising questions in this incident about possible friction between layers of law enforcement. According to a September 24th report compiled by Cascade County Sheriff's Office, Slaughter and a deputy responded to a complaint that a man at the Mountain or Montana Expo Park was acting suspiciously by taking photos of vehicles. According to the fairgrounds director, the man was driving around the property in a black SUV with Canadian license plates, but never entered the show. The whole police reports here. If you want to look at it, it's a PDF. A deputy contacted the man who identified himself as Richard Carina, a Canadian police officer with the Lethbridge Police Department working with a Royal Canadian Mountain Police Task Force. Okay, RCMP in 2022 is the Stasi. They're not law enforcement. According to the Sheriff's Office report, Carina 
said the task force was designed to catch Canadians smuggling illegal love firearms into Canada and that he was with another officer, Agent Craig Howe, with the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. According to the report, Slaughter questions how on why his office wasn't contacted about the investigation. Howe said he had made contact with city police. The fairgrounds, however, are under the county's jurisdiction. Yeah, it's county fairgrounds. Duh. Howe added the person uh, they were investigating was an American who did not have a FFL to sell guns, according to the report. Slaughter noted this was a different reason than that provided by a Canadian police officer. They lied. Because they're liars. After a discussion under the fairgrounds grandstands, Slaughter informed them they had to leave, to which they did. Uh, let's see, this is from Slaughter's writing in his section. He said, I told Craig that because he did not tell me about the operation, they were no longer allowed to continue conducting it. Craig then stated that he does not have to tell me, insinuating that because he is a federal agent, he is not required to do so. Mm, yeah. In a phone interview Thursday, Slaughter acknowledged that federal agents, in fact, do not have to make contact with local law enforcement. Uh, they're supposed to. It's a courtesy thing. They need to tell us what's going on because we're responsible for that jurisdiction. That was a why why did they feel the need to operate in secret without? So as an American citizen, you need to ask yourself this. Why in the name of holy hell are foreign agents, agents of a foreign country, acting in the United States of America, why are they coordinating and working with a tax collection bureaucracy? And where did they get this power? Were, were they, was the AT, were they uh, AFT? Were they there because somebody for, forgot to pay their taxes? This is a big deal. This is a big deal. All right, we've pointed out innumerable times how the RCMP in Canada is acting as the Canadian Stasi. They are not your friends. The AFT are not your friends. They are a Stasi agency. They are a tyrannical agency. They are no different than a KGB, a Stasi, a GRU, whatever. So I, I think, Jared, probably what was really hacking them off was that the it's the AT, uh, the AFT, they feel like it's their job to funnel guns illegally across the border, and they don't like it when other people uh, step you, on their you toes. Mean like Operation Wide Receiver. Yeah, like Operation Wide Receiver. Fast and Furious. And Operation Fast and Furious. What if I was Slaughter? I would say, hey, tell you what. When, when you come back with convictions from Fast and Furious and Wide Receiver, then you can talk to me about, uh, we're going to stem the flow of illegal guns across the border. You are the flow of illegal guns across the border. You scumbags funneled thousands of guns across the border directly into the hands of Mexican gun cartels or drug cartels and American law enforcement officers were killed with those guns. Why isn't the news talking about this? Why isn't this national news? Why is it that American gun owners receive more scrutiny than illegal invaders with violent criminal pasts? You might want to ask yourself that. Let me tell you what gun control is. You know what gun control is? Um, I've got a, a quote from a, a very intelligent man. I've got a quote right here from you. Uh, and it, this, this sums up gun control. Gun control is government monopoly on violence. You see, gun control is not about taking away the evil black, AR-15 rifles because we'll make sure that the Stasi has those. We'll make sure that when the AFT comes to your house that they have, when they come to your house to take away your magazines and your semi-automatic guns and your bump stocks or your braces or whatever, they're going to come 
with AR-15s, with black rifles, with M4s. Because you see, the actual gun isn't the problem. The problem is that you have it. Gun control is about creating a government monopoly on violence, meaning only they get to commit mass murder. If you took every, quote, mass killing committed by a private citizen, added them up, every single one added them up, and then compared it to the mass murder committed by government, it would be an infinitesimal fraction. In the 20th century alone, governments were responsible for the death of over 100 million citizens. How do you say that? How can you possibly say that? Well, let's see. Hitler only killed about 9 million, between 9 and 10, depends on who you talk to. Stalin killed conservatively 20 million. Mao killed at least 40 million that we know of. Pol Pot in Cambodia killed 20% of the population of the country of Cambodia. 20% of the people of Cambodia. It got so bad that communist Vietnam was like, oh, this guy's out of control. When the communists are like, yeah, we're, we're all for genocide and stuff, but come on, you got to calm down here, bro. If you took every mass murder committed by a citizen with a gun and added it up and then compared it to the number of murders committed by the state, by government, you see in everything I just mentioned, every one of those countries, every one of those nations had strict, absolute gun control. You see, the governments had a monopoly on violence. And that's what gun control is all about. It's about having a monopoly on violence. And what you need to be asking yourself every single day, every time you encounter one of these stories, is what does the U.S. and Canadian and Mexican, what do they have in store? What is it about their agenda that requires us to be disarmed? Why do they so desperately desire a monopoly on violence? And then look in the mirror and answer that question for yourself. Boys, what do you think? Oh, before I let before I let you guys talk, you people in Montana need to rally behind this sheriff. Rally behind him and let the Stasi, let the feds know you're not going to let them screw with this guy. He said, because he's targeted now by the, the Stasi is going to target this guy. He said that he expects next legislative session, which begins in January, to see passage of a bill that would require federal agencies to make contact with local law enforcement before launching and investigating on the ground. Yeah. So there you go. All right. So before we before we do it, go in, you boys, have you got anything else to say? Or if we have any questions or concerns or comments. This or- is what we have coming up on Student of the Gun University podcast. The episode topic for this week is what it is thursday it is the, the topic naked is principle the naked principle yes your host professor paul markle will break down the naked principle and explain it to you so you you probably want to be there for that you probably do what do we have any pertinent commenters we do not uh, just people talking and having a good time. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Uh, thank you very much. I saw that video. Uh, Brett sent that of a woman being really stupid, attacking a, a rutting buck with her purse. Hey, ladies, if a buck has come into your your area of uh, of <laughs> she was gored by a buck because she attacked it with her purse. Just outside her back door. I'm going to go ahead and say, not a good idea. You want to throw that into the, uh, please throw that into the uh, show notes for tomorrow or Friday. What do you want to talk about? Friday or tomorrow? Yes. Okay. So at some point in time, we will talk about that in detail 
during our bonus hours. And if you'd like to be a part of the bonus hour, we'd love to have you there. This is an open invitation to you guys. Uh, if you're listening right now and you say, what is this bonus hour of which you speak and how can I get in on it? Well, Jared, how can they get in on that? Go to getsotg.com, choose the undergrad level, start the trial, and then all you have to do is request access to, well, you can listen to yeah. the grad program bonus hours from within the the student lounge when you get access to it, which you will receive immediately upon sign up. And then if you want to join us live in the Discord, just go to your dashboard in the student lounge and click on the join Discord server. It'll take you where you need to go. And uh, and then we'll get you upgraded to the grad program status so that you can join us in That's the right. private grad program channel. We'll upgrade you with a double D. Yeah. So get SOTG.com. Once you go through that process, sign up as an undergrad member. It's quick. It's like 30 seconds of your time. Then you access everything else from your das dashboard in the student lounge, which you will receive via email as soon as you sign up. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You know, Jared, as a person who is frequently a guest on other shows, I can tell you, and I can tell you guys in the audience there, that what you get from one episode, one single episode of Student of the Gun Radio is the equivalent of at least three normal episodes of a regular show i can say that uh i can say that with confidence knowing what i know and if you think i'm wrong then you're not listening but uh, yes they're very good all right tomorrow on thursday's show evs that's electronic vehicles are exploding in florida i said exploding and more clot shot proof proof that the magical mystery shot no is that tomorrow or, fr or friday oh that is tomorrow the magical mystery shot is killing people but we're not going to talk about that because that's an inconvenient truth so uh, uh we got a fighting fitness for you guys and we will have a leadership lesson too so you definitely want to be there um, we hope that you are so until then until we're together again as friends Wait, um, we have to answer a question. Oh, we have to answer a question. Just came in. All right. Doug Arnold says, is there possibly a martial application of the blade in our future? <laughs> the answer is yes. That's sure. Actually, it's on our icebox uh, project board. It's in the icebox. It's in the icebox. It's on ice right now. Yeah. It'll get moved forward uh, when we, I don't know why. When we finish why every is other Doug asking so much thousands of, of things that we do. Do you? Doug, I thought your wife was was sick of me writing new books, and I need to stop. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, so and she's like, I never said that. So there's I people <laughs> that are here that don't know what the Marshall application of dot 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 series is. Oh, can you give them a little? bit Well, of sweet Buddha, if you haven't been paying attention, I uh, see these. They're to the bone. I've been working my fingers to the bone. Uh, this summer, I wrote. Three books, the martial application of the pistol, the martial application of the shotgun, and the martial application of the rifle. You can get all three of them now at shopsotg.com, or if you absolutely have to have it immediately on your tablet, uh, then you can get a Kindle version uh, from the folks at Amazon. But the, all those books are work. Well, they go with our Student of the Gun University program. And if you haven't been ever to SOTGU.com, that's SOTGU.com. Uh, it's there for short Student of the Gun University. Um, what? Hang on a second. www.SOTGU.com. I don't know you ended up there yeah that was weird that was super weird that was weird because we do we use memberium yeah that's the thing we use how that did you get there it was weird i was like you shouldn't be there yeah. you shouldn't be seeing that but uh, if you go to studentofthegun.com uh you can listen to the show and then you can click get notified and as soon as we have live classes uh coming up uh you will be uh notified we have a an invitation only instructor development class that's coming up here less week. than two weeks yeah uh we're gonna that we're gonna be doing so we're getting ready to to roll it out hot and heavy hot and heavy and uh, i oh, think you're gonna baby. like it if you don't like it well i don't know what to tell you get better taste but uh, until we're together again remember 
You're a beginner once. You're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links and remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.